Happy Sabbath. My name is Paul Namakadre, but you can call me Paula. Can everyone say Paula? Paula. The topic today is uh, faith and forgiveness. Uh, it's a blessing to stand before God's people once again this morning and um, just to open his word, to share, and uh, for us to be blessed together. Um, today's message, it's, it's just a simple message, a message that we've heard many times growing up in the church, um, a message that we're used to, uh, but even though it's a simple message, we need to still ask the Holy Spirit to, to work in our hearts, amen? Amen. Uh, so that we may be convicted, not by the speaker, but by the Spirit of God. Please bow your heads with me as I say a short prayer. Father God in heaven, Lord, once again we come before you. We thank you for your word. And Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. There's nothing that I can say, nothing that I can do, Lord, to convict the hearts of your people that are here. So I pray, Lord, that I may be hidden from their sight and that they may see you, that they may hear you and that their hearts may be convicted, Lord. Father God, I pray that you speak through me. Be with this church, Lord, and we thank you for this time that we can spend freely worshiping you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Faith and forgiveness. Faith and forgiveness. This, uh, t- this, today's topic is more of a self-evaluation type topic. Uh, as how well we remember that we are saved and how we owe our lives to God. Faith and forgiveness. If everyone can please turn their Bibles to Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 and verse 2. Please put your Bibles high up in the air if you have your Bibles on you today. Amen. Can everyone say amen? Amen. 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 God is good, man. All the time. And all the time. I've got another one. It says, uh, God is awesome. And you say, you better tell somebody. And then you say, you better tell somebody. And I say, God is awesome. Okay, let's try it. God is awesome. You better tell somebody. Amen. Okay, I feel a bit less nervous now. Okay, Psalms chapter 32, verse 1. And verse 2, if someone has a loud voice, I'm going to ask that you read it out to us, please. Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on that verse and also 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 1 to 9. It shouldn't really surprise us that the Bible speaks about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big topic, especially in the faith, in, especially as Christians. And in the Bible, um, in all various ways, forgiveness is discussed. And it stands out above other things. Today we're going to be focusing more on forgiveness and also on faith. The Bible says, if we can read together, two, three. The basic, the bottom line is that we all need forgiveness. I'm going to ask anyone, any, any courageous person to put their hand up if they don't need forgiveness today. I think we all need forgiveness. I think I usually ask forgiveness mostly from my wife. Uh, I'm sure all the husbands, put your hand up if you agree with me. <laughs> the wife's like, put your hand down. Um, every Friday night, we try, every, if we, um, when we open Sabbath together, we try and, uh, before we pray at the end, ask each other for forgiveness. We say, oh, babe, um, before we pray, I just want to take this time to ask you to forgive me. I've done this, I did this on Monday, I did this on Tuesday, I did this on Wednesday. And um, I want to ask you to please forgive me as we enter the Sabbath together. 
Maybe that might be something that you can practice. But forgiveness, it's a big thing. It's not only towards our wife or our sibling. It's to our friends, our family members, even maybe our church members as well. And so today we're going to be looking at forgiveness and the fact that all we like sheep have gone astray and every man has turned unto his own way. That's us here today, amen? That's us. Sometimes, um, well, I've written down here, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have missed the mark. And so I believe we have missed God's mark. I want to show an illustration here. There's a mark here. Maybe when you were a child, your parents did this. I'm not sure if you did this in your home. Took you to a door frame. They marked your height when you were like four, five, six, seven, eight years old. And as you grew, the mark would go higher and higher. No matter how tall, um, you were proud when they would brag about how tall you were. And it was okay until your older sibling came along. I've got a, one older sibling. He comes along. My mic is probably here. His mic is probably up there. Does anyone, can anyone relate to me? Oh, I've got a brave gentleman right here down the front. They would rub it, rub it in that they were taller than you. But suppose your parents went to the top of the house and made another mark and then told you, I want you to be this tall. So this week I went to Paul and um, Karen's house and uh, I was just uh, servicing the aircon. So I walk in, they got a beautiful, who's been to Paul and Karen's house? They've got a beautiful house. And um, so I went into, the, went into the ceiling space, you gotta climb pretty much above, your, above the roof that you, that you that, what, the, above the lounge room. And I'm in the ceiling space and I'm thinking about this illustration. What if your parent went up and marked the top of the house? Suppose your parent went to, parents went to the top of the house. Testing, testing. Might be flat, eh? All good. Can you hear me? And what if your mom and dad said, this is the mark that I've set for you. So it doesn't matter what your siblings say. This is the mark that I want you to reach. No matter how tall you and your siblings grew, you would never reach that mark, true? No one could rub anyone else's nose in the fact that they were taller because they were still missing the mark. And that's the same with us when it comes to sin. Testing. That's the same with us when it comes to sin. God has set a mark, a high mark. In fact, God wants us to be like him. And that is the high mark. If we don't reach that mark, we can't go to heaven, they say. And we can't have eternal life. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So this is our mark. But God's mark is at the top of the house. When are we ever going to reach that mark? Are we ever going to reach that mark? Yes or no? Friends, God has set a high mark for us. But we know that we can't reach it. One translation says, we have all missed the mark of God's perfection. That means no one can brag about their height because they are still well short of the mark. So friends, God has set a mark of maturity and spirituality that he wants us to attain. But no matter how much we'll try, we will still miss the mark. Now what is the problem sometimes that we might have, that I might have? Many don't see the need for forgiveness because they're comparing their status with someone else. Our brothers and sisters are not the standard. We're not trying to reach their mark or outgrow their mark. The requirement is God's mark. So, for example, I might be sitting at that mark 
And then someone else comes along, and I look at his mic, and his, it's a bit lower than mine. So I say, I don't need forgiveness, because his sin is worse than mine. I met up with one of my um, childhood friends this week, and he, he randomly called me out of nowhere. I hadn't seen him for a few months. And um, growing up, we were best, best mates. And he said, bro, I just need to talk. We just need to talk. I didn't know what he wanted to talk about. And so we sat down at Macca's, and then um, he was saying, oh, I really just, I thought he was talking about his marriage. He, had, he was probably going through some troubles. And he said, oh, bro, I've got a problem. You know, I've, I've been, in the last six years, I've been smoking. But not just smoking, he's been smoking drugs. Uh, a drug that they call ice. And I looked at him and I was like thinking, bro, no way. I would never believe it. If we were to stand next to each other on this board, if I were to use my human eyes, where would I be standing and where would he be standing? Do I sometimes do that? Do, you, do we sometimes do that when we see someone that's on, you know, on a worse condition than we are? saying that they probably need more help, they probably need more forgiveness than what I would because I'm studying to be a pastor and I've got a nice home and I've got a nice car and I've got, a, I've got business, I've got money in my pocket. But friends, we all need forgiveness, amen? The Bible also tells us that God has provided this forgiveness. God established a way where we could not have to bear the punishment of failing to reach that mark. And what was his solution? Friends, what was his solution? Please say it louder. Amen. Jesus. He sent Jesus to reach that mark for us. Jesus came and lived that perfect sinless life. And then he traded places with us. He took the punishment for us not reaching that mark. And then we are released from the responsibility of not reaching it. Because Jesus bore that punishment in our place. Friends, I don't know about you. But I've had some marks on my wall this week. And when I pray for forgiveness, Jesus' blood covers that door. This morning in uh, Sabbath school, Eva shared with us, she said, uh, a lot of the time we just pray and we just ask for forgiveness. We say, Lord, please forgive us for the sins that we've committed. That just sounded like a prayer, eh? Lord, please forgive us for the sins that we've committed before I go to bed tonight. Keep us safe as you sleep. Amen. Have we taken the time to actually list those things in our minds or th those things that we are struggling with in our prayers? Have you done that this week? If you haven't, I'd like to give you one minute to do it now. So in your chairs, wherever you are sitting, I'm going to ask that you close your eyes. Close your eyes. If we had uh, music, it would... It would put us in that, you know, in that, in that mood. But it's alright, there's no music. Only the Holy Spirit is here. Amen. I'm going to give you one minute to pray. Just to pray to God. Just you and God. Share with Him. And after a minute, I'll continue.
Psalms 32 verse 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Like David, some of us would be glad that our sins are forgiven. We better rejoice. All of those inward, untold, unknown sins, we better be glad that they're gone. Psalms 32 verse 2, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. He doesn't hold me responsible for not reaching that mark. And I did, I blew it. I missed the mark. And he relieves me of that responsibility. But friends, I would like you to turn to um, 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1 verse 9. In fact, I've got that, um, that verse up there on the screen. If we can all read together. 2, 3. It says the second part of that verse, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. There's something about forgiveness that we're not told, that we're told. And it's something that many people don't readily recognize or take seriously. It's the fact that sometimes we forget that we are forgiven. You can forget forgiveness. And this has really spoken to me this week. The thing that we must realize is that the grace of God in that he swapped, Jesus swapped places with us and it is not a free ride. We are not thereby excused from all the responsibility of growing. Uh, friends, I want to just go to the Second Peter chapter 1 and starting from verse 5 up until verse 8. The Bible says that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. If Jesus reached that mark, which was not physical, but inward, we are to conform to his, his image, striving to reach the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Now, if someone has their Bible, if you could please turn, uh, for, turn to Philipp Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Someone with a loud voice, please read it to us. Please read it to get again for us, please, brother. I press toward the goal, the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. I press toward the goal. I press to reach the mark to the prize of the high call of God. So we've done the first step. The first step that we've done is we've asked God for forgiveness. Now what's the second step? What is the second step? What is the name of our sermon this morning? Faith and forgiveness. The second step is that we need to conform to God's image. That we need to reach the mark, the prize for the high call of God. God has called us unto his glory. But remember, we fall short. We've missed the mark. And so God tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. To knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter tells us there are a few things that we need to apply to our lives. First of all, to add to our faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance. All these things we need to add to our lives. But what does he say in verse 9? 
For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. So the fact that we have asked God for forgiveness, he doesn't say, okay, I'll forgive you. You don't have to work towards that mark at the top of the house. What does he tell us? I've forgiven you, but you still need to practice reflecting my image. So when Jesus taught his disciples about himself and those with whom he came into contact, what is the standard to which he expects those that have been forgiven to abide by? What is Jesus' standard? When he came to earth and when he was teaching his disciples, what did he teach them about forgiveness? How could they increase their faith? What were some of the things that he taught them regarding forgiving one another? If someone has a loud voice, please turn to Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. We see here that we have asked God for forgiveness. God tells us there are a few things that you need to work on to mold yourself into my character, to be a reflection of me. But what are the, some of the words that Jesus tells us when it comes to forgiveness? If someone has a loud voice, please read it for us. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. And that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespass. Sometimes if, if we're on our way to church, uh, hypothetically, sometimes you'd sit in the car park and by the time you get, come, out of the, come out of the car, everyone's smiling. But before you got out of the car, it was like, oh, why did you do that? This, oh, da, da, da. And as soon as you see a church member, oh, hey, how is it going? <laughs> Happy Sabbath. If you're sitting next to your husband, hold his hand. If you're sitting next to your wife, the Bible says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Turn to your husband and say, honey, please forgive me. I love you. <laughs> or vice versa. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. If someone has a loud voice, a brave soul. Please read it out to us. I like that verse. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. As we bring our message to a close today, Matthew 17, 3 and 4. Ah, oh, sorry, Luke 17, 3 and 4. My apologies, Luke 17, 3 and 4. Now that's a hard one. Amen? Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent. What must you do? You must forgive them. I was working with uh, a couple of my, my cousins this week. They just finished high school last year. And I was just bringing, taking them around with me on any jobs that I pick up. And then um, I teach him something, right? You teach him how to screw something onto a wall. You'd go away, you come back,
Screw it onto the wall is crooked, so I'd have to redo it. I said, this is how you do it. You have to put, make sure it's straight, screw it onto the wall. The next time you come back, because he has to do a few, like along the wall, right? The next time you come back, the thing's crooked again. <sighs> okay, you have to screw it like this, make sure it's straight, mount it onto the wall. The next time you come back, the same thing. What if that happened to, what if that, what if that has been happening to us or to you in, in your personal life? What would, what kind of feelings do you get? You feel like having an, an, an intense fellowship with that individual, you know? <laughs> but what does the Bible say? Even if they sin again. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. I think this is, my, this is probably my favorite verse out of all of them. Someone with a loud voice, please. What a verse, amen? What a verse. Leave your gift there before the altar. Go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Today we've asked God for forgiveness in our seats. But do we still have something against our brother or a sister? Maybe a friend at work. Maybe someone here in church. Maybe a family member that we haven't talked to for, for months. Because he did something wrong to us. God tells us in, in 1 Peter how to increase our faith. Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. And then at the end he says, for he who lacks these things is what? short-sighted, even blind. For he has forgotten that he was cleansed from his own sins. How can our faith grow? How can our faith grow if we are still holding that grudge against that individual? Okay, sorry guys, this is the last, last, last verse, okay? Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Amen. I'd like to share this, um, this Ellen White quote found in the Sanctified Life, page 83. The more we contemplate the character of Christ and the more we experience of his saving power, the more keenly shall we realize our own weakness and imperfection, and the more earnestly shall we look to him as our strength and our redeemer. We have no power in ourselves to cleanse the soul temple from its defilement. But as we repent of our sins against God and seek pardon through the merits of Christ, he will impart that faith which works by love and purifies the heart. You don't live in a constant awareness that by grace you are saved through faith. But it is a gift of God. So friends, I want to ask you today, how is our faith developing? When you think of faith and forgiveness, do they connect? Is it, is it, because usually when you hear topics, it's just forgiveness or it's just faith. But how does faith and forgiveness connect? 
is my faith stunted because I'm not willing to forgive? Or is my faith stunted because I'm not willing to ask for forgiveness? So God sent his son to come and die for us, to forgive us from, for our sins. And in Luke, one of the last things that he says when he's on the cross, what does he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If God can forgive us, should we forgive our, our brothers and our sisters? And will that help my faith grow? I'm going to ask the, the team to come up as we sing our final song. I think the final song is This Is My Desire. And I would like to ask the church today, what is your desire? This is a simple message that we've heard over and over and over and over again growing up in the church. But is our desire really to follow him? To give him our lives? May we sing this song together as we reflect on these words. Our loving Heavenly Father, it's our desire, Lord, to follow you, to give you our hearts, to give you our souls, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we'll put everything away that is holding us back from a closer relationship with you. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves, to ask for forgiveness from those that we have wronged, but also to accept the forgiveness of those, Lord, that we have wronged. Father God, I pray, Lord, for a special blessing over this church. Lord, you, we don't know what everyone else is going through, but you know us, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you will work in our hearts to humble our, ourselves, Lord, so that we can serve you on a deeper level. We give you our lives once again, Lord. We pray these things in your name. Amen.